spring is here. It's a little bit warm over the weekends. We're gonna get a little bit warmer later. Oh, hey everybody! Welcome back to the Friday show. April oh, we're 2nd. recording. We're recording. April second, twenty twenty one, two thousand twenty one. Right here we go. I'm Joe. That's Jr. I and hope you guys had a nice Thursday because yesterday was uh, April Fool's Day. I hope nobody uh, kind of tricked you into Wait, that thing. Wait, it was April Fool's yesterday? Yeah. What? Yesterday was April 1st. You're tricking me. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's the uh, first Friday of uh, April. New background. Not the first fresh. day, first Friday, right? First, first Friday. As I said, first Friday. Mm -hmm. I said that, JR. Come on. But yeah. Belated April Fools. No, you don't do that. <laughs> no, you, this there, is, there's no belated. No, you can't do that. Really, that would no. be, uh, be kind of messed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really messed up. All right. April 2nd. Let's see what's happened on this day, on today's observance. First observance is Ooh. National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. PBJ. PBJ originated in America. It's a. Uh, I mean, what do a, you know, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a delicious snack, really. But I, I, you know, it's enough said. It, I mean, the name explains it. Peanut butter and jelly. I mean, what more can you uh, ask for? Nothing. No, now really. I now I want a piece of that. So, well, how about this? What kind of peanut butter do you like? Smooth or crunchy? Oh, that's yeah. Um, I, I like creamy than uh, crunchy one. The smooth one, the smooth one. I like a little bit of crunch to it. Mm -hmm. How about no, your? No, no, because you toast the bread, and the bread is crunchy. Well, so you can have double the crunch. I guess. So double crunch peanut butter. Plus, you're, pu you're putting the jelly, so it kind of smoothens it, uh, smoothens it out. What kind so. of jelly do you like? Strawberry. Uh, strawberry. 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 You ever try grape? I like grape too. I, I think I tried grape and blueberry. Blueberry, and raspberry. Yeah, they're pretty much kind of similar in taste because um, they're jam, you know. There's there's orange jelly, I think. Yeah, there's orange jelly. But strawberry is my go-to. Strawberry is you know? the go-to. I like grapes, but yeah, strawberry is the go-to. How do you uh, prepare your sandwich? You know, I see people prepare it and it is toast it first, and toast then put it. the peanut butter and then the jelly. Right. So, oh, you know what I do? But actually, well, here's what I do. I got I got two. Uh, loaves of bread right mm -hmm. so one side just all peanut butter the other side's all uh jelly and then mm -hmm. you just put them together oh so the thing is so people when they put jelly right they spread it for entire bread which i don't like you why should, you should put it like in the center so when you push the sandwich together right this jelly will spread by itself okay so, well you don't like something that that uh no flows it, out like it, this it oozes <laughs> it oozes out and get on your clothes you know uh, oh well yes it gets, yeah. it's sticky too no i guess if you if you plan on uh putting a lot of of peanut butter and jelly you right. have to eat it on the table right right well yeah but as a on. snack though yeah you what wanna, you you're not gonna eat it with a fork and a spoon or a knife you can eat it in your hands oh yeah that's, that's what a sandwich is so when you eat it in your hands the jelly's gonna uh, drip out because you, you're applying pressure right. you know when you take a bite and so, it just blows out what I do is like it's really good. What <laughs> I will use thick, crunchy peanut butter and make a little center where I put the jelly inside. So when I press the sandwich, the jelly will spread. Oh, it, it, it will spread, will spread right? It will spread. And I do like toasted, uh, toasted. But sometimes I can just get the raw. Okay. Not the raw. The we call it um, untoasted sandwich. Uh, what, what, yeah. White, uh, white, white. Uh, you ever try those? Uh, we call it, those uh, pre-made. Uh, PB and J sandwich. What's it no, called? No, actually, the only the Smuckers, only... the Smuckers, uh, Uncrustables. No, I no, I haven't. The only time I would eat a peanut butter jelly is if I'm the one who made it, or if someone that I know makes it. Oh, really? You, you don't know? make it yourself? I don't. I don't. I haven't tried a pre-made one, to be honest. Well, yeah. they sell it in the stores. It's mm -hmm. pre-made, and it doesn't have any crust. It's like a circle. It's actually a circle. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you like the crust? Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. some people don't like crust. I don't. Like, oh no, yeah, that's true. That's a, you know what? Um, a, yes. a little bit off topic. I think uh, Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, well, yeah, <laughs> Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut was able to uh, solve that uh, problem with a lot of people who don't like crust. Because what they did is they actually you have the option to put like some meat in the crust. You know, so, so it's like like a corn dog. Yeah, yeah, like that one. Yeah, so yeah. that kind of makes you, I guess, spend a little bit more. That means more money to them, and at the same time, not waste the crust part. Or you, some, I remember they're putting cheese in the crust too. It could be cheese, it could be yeah. uh, sausage or hot dog or something. It's mean. just something that instead of just buying through really hard cardboard bread, 
Mm -hmm. You don't go. Well, that's the reason why I like my peanut butter and jelly goes all the way to the edge because like I wanted to get a taste of that all the way to the crust. Ooh, you, know, you know, all the way to the corner. You know, um, when I was a kid, I loved peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, right? But now I'm older, I'm more careful about my health. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize these guys were so high in calories. Uh, unfortunately like so, yeah. 400 calories, oh my gosh. That's like a quarter of my daily intake. <laughs> I know it's a quarter, that's like one fourth of it. And peanut butter is most of the fat. Mm -hmm. You have jelly, most of the sugar. Well, the sugar is a little bit of sugar in there. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I can enjoy it nowadays when I know how unhealthy it is, really. True. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, once in a while, you once can uh, while. give yourself a, little, a, a bite of it but, as a treat. Yeah, you know? but the thing is, like this, like, if I have a day where I can like eat whatever I want, right? Are you gonna pick peanut butter? It's not gonna be the top of my list. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's it, it, it used to be my favorite, but now I'm more more careful what I eat. I realize. Well, on the other hand, though, it's I think, a snack. It's a snack. Uh, yeah, but I would say that this kind of uh, of food uh -huh. is a a quick um what do you call this? Like it's a quick energy lunch. source yeah, for is. like let's say people like you know how like some people it's would like just a, drink coffee in the morning. Yes. And uh, so they can go all day working and all. Yeah, that. it's like a filling snack. Yes, kind of. Yeah, like there you, you go. You miss out lunch. You can just make it real quick. It's and like, really quick energy. Snack. Yeah, yeah, but of yeah. course, if you're just sitting all day, uh, you shouldn't be eating this kind of stuff. You should eat all, all the time. Day. Yeah, because yeah. so, that energy is gonna stay in your body. Yeah. So, tell me in the comments what kind of bread you use, what kind of peanut butter, smooth or crunchy, and jelly. Or if you have a specific brand, because I know some people will be particular in their oh, yeah, peanut like butter brand. Jiffy, you know? what's other brand? Uh, That's all I know, actually. <laughs> I mean, by the way, Nutella is not a peanut butter. No, okay? no, it's a hazelnut. Yes. Yes. Hazelnut. Oh, plus it's uh, it's too sweet for me to become a peanut butter. <laughs> so, what are the brands of peanut butter? I'm just thinking of Jiffy. I'm pretty sure there's more. There should be more. I think we should go to uh, How to Bargain and look for some uh, brands. <laughs> no, you guys, you guys gotta help me. Uh, I'm I'm blanking right now. Yeah, let us know. Give us more uh, peanut butter brand or even jelly brand. Oh, jelly brand too. Mm -hmm. Jelly Smuckers usually is the one that makes peanut butter. Why am I just thinking about Jiffy? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's more that's peanut butter brand. Of, well, that's all I can yeah, think of. Yeah, I only can think about that one. Okay, well, you guys know how to make peanut butter. Well, it's not that hard to make. You can't really mess. Well, I can't say that. Uh, I can't say that. There's some people who don't know how to make peanut butter and jelly sandwich, unfortunately. Mm. Moving on, you know, since it's high calorie, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta burn those calories. And what better hey, way to go. do is walk to work day. Oh, I should have done it today. You can because you live close by. I can't. I live yeah. like 10 miles away. I, I'm literally walking the distance, at least in my, in, my, uh, in my own measurements. Well, yeah. So I actually did one time walk to work, 10 miles, right? And the first hour of work, I couldn't do anything. I was just like exhausted. <laughs> so I'll. I don't, 10 miles a lot, yeah. Yeah, I walked 10 miles to work. I don't recommend it. But well, here's the thing. Uh, uh, another way for you to celebrate this uh -huh. is, especially here in our building, you know how big our parking space is? Yes. Try to you park walk. by across the street. Yeah. <laughs> and then no, you no, walk all the way good. here. And the thing is, I guess, like, I think National Walk to Work Day is mostly applied to people who live in the city because most of the people in the New city. New York is yeah, one. It's mostly people you know. who walk around a lot, the subway. So you're walking a lot already. Yeah, in fact, actually, in uh, Times Square, uh, right? There's a lot. I mean, the, the roads, the streets are very narrow. A lot of people prefer to ride, to go in a subway and walk or sometimes bike instead of actually driving. Right, right, right. So for me, right, I think I think the rule of thumb is like one mile is you burn 100 calories, right? So you eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich, it's around 400 calories. So you need to walk four miles. Walk four miles. Man. Uh, I don't think that's worth it, guys. <laughs> but yeah, National Walk to Work Day. If you guys have, well, like I said, it depends on the distance, like how much you can actually walk. Right. Well, um, even though it's specifically walking to work day, uh, you know, it's not going to hurt. Actually, no, it's no. going to help you if you just walk uh, without helps any... your heart, your cardiovascular health, right. walking, your muscles. Without even going to work or, you know, you don't have to go in a specific place. You can actually walk in your backyard if you have a Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't backyard. necessarily have to be working and walk mm -hmm. to the nearest uh, grocery store mm -hmm. or somewhere else. It doesn't need to be at work. If, yeah. if it doesn't apply to you, just find some place where you normally would take a car and walk and you know i got a question for them yes what is for you what is what would be the best place to take a walk 
usually the trail, the park. I'm always、uh, up for the beach, the shore. The beach, yes. Because、yeah. I, because I can、uh, take my shoes off、uh. and walk barefooted on the sand. I usually do a space walk, you know. What's a space walk? You go in space and walk on the international、uh, international space station. I'm just kidding. I can't space walk. What about moonwalk? I can moonwalk. You cannot moonwalk. I can moonwalk. I dare you to moonwalk right now. <laughs> I'm talking about the Michael Jackson moonwalk, <laughs> not the no, NASA not moonwalk. A, okay. <laughs> so, you guys ate that peanut butter and jelly sandwich for、uh, breakfast or lunch?、Mm, go take a walk. Go take a walk. You got at least walk four miles to burn all that calories. Next is National Ferret Day. Something who is not walking. So, or ferret, probably walking in four legs. So,、know. ferret is domesticated. That means they're really, really friendly. Yeah, actually, they're、oh. domesticated pets. So, when you think of pets, you probably think of like.、Uh, Uh, not birds.、Uh, Famous ones. Dogs and cats. Best friend. And to lesser extent, birds.、Yeah. But、Fish. some people nowadays they prefer having ferrets. Really? Yeah. Ferrets they're around like、uh, a foot long.、Mm-hmm. They're. Aren't they known with the、uh, with their long body? Long body. Yeah, they're very long body.、Uh, they are. They sleep around like twelve to eighteen hours a day. So they they sleep a lot, and they're usually active around、wow. dawn and dusk. So sunrise. Oh yeah, because they're they're nocturnal. They're not really nocturnal. They're, they're not. Just, they're,、okay. just, no, they're not.、Uh, they're carnivores, so they prefer eating like、uh, mice, mice, all that stuff. And they you can feed them like cat food too, more、okay. more nutrients than that. From what,、uh, based on what it looks like,、uh, what is a ferret closer to a dog or a cat, or maybe a rodent? More like a, I think、really、it's more like a rodent. Like, it's a rodent,、uh, huh? Like a, we call it like a squirrel. Yeah. Like a raccoon. Raccoon. Raccoon,、mm-hmm. kind of like that. But since they're domesticated, right? So they're friendly to humans. That's cool. So I like like the raccoon or possum that lives around in neighborhoods, right? They're more feral. They're more hostile. They're more wild. Wild towards yeah, humans.、Yeah. These guys, they listen to you. They, they kind of like more active cats. You know, they're more. Thinner, more long, but yeah, I see. I don't know anyone personally I know that has fair as a pet, but that is a pet that you can have. That's cool. Yeah. Kind of extending or branching out through、uh, from from your common、uh, known pets like、right. fish,、uh, cats, dogs,、yeah. bird. So like normal like cats, they are very curious too. So before then, right,、uh, people would use them to. Chase out rats in their house,、mm-hmm. like small crevices, like small places where we can normally reach. These guys can fit in there, chase the rats out, and you know, keep your、uh, home or place rat-free, rodent-free. So they have,、uh, we call it, they have a purpose. They got purpose. They、yeah. have purpose. So National Ferret Day. I, I don't know if I would own one, because I'm more like a dog guy. You know, I'm、okay. for dogs. Cat too, a little bit less too.、Uh, I like fish too. Ferrets maybe, maybe. I think I would get a ferret just try it out. I mean, you know, just just to see、uh, what tricks can I teach him. <laughs> It probably runs around around the whole.、Uh, But you know、house. who the funniest ferret though? Who? who His name is Will. Oh my gosh. Okay, moving on. Will ferret. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to today in history. In 1800. He used to be an elf. <sighs> yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> he was a news anchor too. Lou Ludwig van Beethoven leads his premiere of the first symphony in Vienna. So he was a student of、uh, Joseph Haydn and、uh, Amadeus Mozart. Wait, was the melody I was playing from him? That was the. It, it's one of his most famous melodies.、Right? I think so. It is. Yeah. Da, yep. da, 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 yes. Okay.、Uh, what other songs do you know about Beethoven?、Uh, Moonlight Sonata was a big one. How, how does it go? I mean,、uh, my my problem about the classical music is that I know it how sound it all sounds. The same? <laughs> no, no, no. I I know how it sounds, but I never really got the chance to memorize the 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 piece, the name of the piece. You know. I think he did a、uh, Ossie Joy too. Well, how does it go? Da, 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 oh, da, da. isn't it like for Christmas? Like, yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Oh, New Year. I mean. Da, 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 no, that's da, all I said. Oh, never mind. Oh. But <laughs> when he first premiered his、uh, first symphony in、uh, Vienna, the orchestra, right? He was、uh, 30 years old. Okay. Yeah, and he、um, it wasn't said directly, but it was an inspiration for his teacher, Haydn and、uh, Mozart. Okay. Yeah, so those are more they're they're more、uh, they're more famous they're famous、uh, pianists too. So yeah,、uh, when I was learning、uh, 
when I was young, I, I learned piano. And, oh, really? Yeah, I know, I know a little bit. But you know how to Nowadays, play Twinkle yeah. Twinkle Little Star? That's too hard. That's too advanced for me. What? Oh my god, <laughs> it's too advanced for me. Come on. Hey, I mean, like you know, those songs, uh, simple songs, is yeah. where you have to start in order for your fingers to or your hands oriented to the exactly songs. to get used right. on uh, you know which note to press and all. Yeah. So his first uh, symphony was. Uh, Premier, and he became more of a well-known person, well-known pianist, right? Classical music to this day, people still listen to him. Moving on to Notable Birth is, oh no, it got cut off, but it's, Anderson. I don't know if we can move it, but uh, Hans Christian Anderson, right? Yeah, so, you're just missing a letter N on the. Yeah, this is a letter N. Yeah. Anderson. So he was born in Norway in 1805. So when um, unless he's here. Yeah. So he was born the same time around uh, Beethoven as well too, the 1800s. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you probably know him as a writer of many uh, fairy tales that you know. Of. Oh, so he's not a composer. No, he's, he's an author. He's an author. Okay. Yes, a fairy tale. Uh, the Emperor New Clove. Oh, Ariel. I like that. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, the Little Mermaid, Ariel. Really? Yes. Wow. Um, I guess not the Disney one, because you know, like Disney kind of tends they, they to take from him. They, yeah, they they they, they have their own. They get adaptation. inspired, yeah, they yeah, and then they adapt it on their own version. Uh, one of the more recent adaptation was uh, Frozen, which really? took from the Snow Queen. Okay, yeah, all right. Which he wrote. Uh, you ever heard of the Ugly Duckling? The story of that. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's about the ugly duckling that grew into uh, a beautiful swan. Yes, yeah, so you know. It, it really helps when when you are young. You read this, right? You realize people tease you because of your pimples and all that stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't realize how inner beauty that you have, and later on you become you come to form, you know? Yeah, yeah. So then, uh, Thumbelina, you heard of that one? Yeah, uh, the uh, girl uh, that is the size of a thumb. Uh -huh. The princess and the pea. I, I think that's the one where that one. I I can't remember. I, I know she, the princess is the frog. The princess V, I think, is the one where she has a pillow and she put a pea underneath the pillow and she can feel the pea, something like that. But what? These fairy tales, <laughs> you know how the fairy tales are. But yeah, he is an author of many fairy tales that uh, nowadays uh, Disney and other mediums use to adapt and put on the big Imagine if he's, alive, uh, if he's alive today. Oh, he's maybe probably rich. making money. There's a lot of money. Making money. Off of Disney. <laughs> oh yeah, well we'll have to pay him. The royalty right there. Moving on to cultural spotlight. This week we are going to the Caribbean. We are going to visit Jamaica. 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 So talking about the culture of Jamaica, right? We will talk about most of... Uh, you ever heard of uh, Rastafarian? The Rasta? Yeah. So I Rastafarian like a... is a culture that derives mostly from the Bible, right? They take an aspect from the Bible and incorporate it to their uh, African uh, culture too. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most famous uh, Rastafarian is Bob Marley. Okay. And Bob Marley was a reggae singer, and mm -hmm. reggae is a way of that. Well, that's the another style of music. Yes, yeah, a style of music where you, it's like more, more like laid back music with like uh, drums, low beat drums. It's hard for me to explain Off or beat. describe it. It's kind of like. My, my, my only, my one word description for... Uh, it's kind of like jazz, more like a slow down jazz, to be honest. It well, could for be, me, but, that's yeah, how I... But my single word description for, uh, for, for reggae is tropical. <laughs> it's like, oh, if yeah, you hear steel reggae, drums steel drums you, would, you would see this, an island, yeah. uh, palm trees or coconut trees, you know? Right, right. So, so I don't yeah. know that. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So Rastafarian, right? You probably see them wearing like uh, colorful, uh, what you call it, beanies, right? Like, Red, oh yeah, green, yeah, uh huh. And have dreadlocks and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. part of their culture, and like I said, is is um, it takes inspiration from the Bible and Christianity, and the music art form of it is reggae. It's reggae, yeah. Yeah, regular people still listen to reggae nowadays. I like listening to reggae, you know, especially summertime. Cause you, yeah, cause like the beach and all that stuff. Yeah, like what whatever uh, concept uh, they put into the the a reggae song. Right. It still it still sounds like it's perfect for summer. It is sunrise it is. sunset. You know, like even if it's a love song, even if it's a. Uh, like what do you call this? Like a, a song about problems overcoming yes, things. Yes. If it's on a reggae beat, oh man, you could, you know, you you could see me listening to that song. <laughs> it is really uh, what do you call it? it is. It's like a chill. Yeah, and then there's a specific uh, 
how do you say it? Like, uh, not well. First, first of all, beat right. But uh -huh. as far as like strumming guitar, right. there's a specific way of you to strum it because uh, for for most of the reggae songs, uh, it will be like strum tap, strum tap, right, right, like, right, mm, chink, mm, chink, like that. That's like like how the melody flows. So yeah, you would know that's reggae. It yeah. is. You can tell right away it's reggae. Yeah, there you go. Especially if you listen to Bob Marley. You know, um, no woman, no cry. Buffalo soldier. That was a good one too. Buffalo Soldier. <laughs> you, you, you know Reggae when you hear it right away. Of, of course, yeah. All right, moving on to the animal of the day. For stuff of the day, we do have a theme. So we okay, try to figure out uh, the theme. and you guys will be trying to guess the uh, theme of the day for uh, with me. All, All right. right. All right, we have an intruder here. <laughs> Anyways, the first animal of the day, well, the animal of the day is a sardine, right? Sardine came from the um, Italian word where it used to live near the Sardinia, near Italy, it's an island. Wait, Sardinia is a place? It's a place in... Where sardines are? No, well... It's like they have their own kingdom? No, no, <laughs> no. The sailors around that area saw a lot of sardines there, so that's where... They saw this lot of fish here, right? Uh -huh. In the island of Sardinia, near the... off the coast of Italy. I think it's to the west, southwest of Italy. Mm -hmm. And there's like, these fish are abundant here. There's a lot of them here. So we just, just call them after the island, sardine. Right. That's cool. So sardine is our... we call it as a... They're delicious. Delicious. Not they're said. more like a prey fish. So they're on the lower on the food scale. So bigger animals will eat it, right? Bigger... Uh, I mean, we eat it. We eat it. <laughs> so. so the good thing about this, right? The smaller the fish, right? The lower the mercury content. And uh, mercury from the last time that we talked toxic. about mercury, yeah, right? It's it's, it can be very toxic in our like, body. You know how we eat like tuna and stuff like this? Hey, be careful. Don't eat too much tuna because there's a lot of like uh, mercury in it. Mm -hmm. So. Since they're small, they don't eat that much, and this, the mercury content is a little bit low. And like you said, we usually eat them, right? You can have them dried, we can have it pickled. Put them in a can, fry them Usually in a can. But the one thing I want to talk about sardine is the omega fatty acid, like oh, most fish, right? Yeah. So you know how people say, okay, let's, I'll ask you. For omega fatty acid, right? What, do, what are the health benefits people usually tell you? that you heard of. I would say uh, uh, keeping your heart healthy. Cardiovascular right? health. Yeah, yes. there you go. And anything else? You have this. You know, when uh, since we're Asian, uh, right? Usually my parents are, you gotta eat fish to make you smart. You heard really? That? Yeah. Oh, well, oh yeah, when yeah, I grew yeah, up, I, yeah, yeah, I, I heard about that. Uh, they, they're saying, uh, you know, uh, eating fish is actually good for your brain. Yeah. But they don't really specifically tell you how it works. No, so. well, some people think it's omega fatty acid, right? Really? So okay. what you mentioned is the cardiovascular health for your heart, right? Well, the thing is, like, all this benefit that the omega, omega fatty acid uh, purports to tell you that it might benefit you, right? It's inconclusive. Okay. So inconclusive mean, doesn't mean it doesn't help you. It's, just, it's not. It's not sure yet. It's not sure yet. That's not enough evidence and uh, science backing it that say 100% this will help your heart. 100% okay. this will help your memory, your brain. But oh yeah, the memory thing. Yeah, yeah the memory too. It's like oh, you're not gonna forget the things that you reviewed. You but, eat a fish. Yeah. But it doesn't. It didn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So these guys are delicious, and. The omega fatty three acids. A little bit nutritious here. in a way. Of course, uh, like what we always say every time, moderation is the key. Uh -huh. You cannot eat too many of yeah. these because it's, you know, first of all, I think it's probably going to put your mercury uh, level of intake. Well, well yeah, yeah. If, well, I mean, in if, this if case, you're not, about not like every day, no, every day, you know, but yeah, but there's, there's small fish, so the mercury content is a little bit lower than that's what's good compared to a tuna, which is way bigger. Okay. Know? So moving on for a plan of the day. We have ashwagandha. You ever heard of ashwagandha? ashwagandha? No. So ashwagandha is a supplement as well. It's a plant, right? That they ground into a powder and use as a mm -hmm. supplement for uh, your cognitive ability, your cognitive, your memory, your stuff. I don't know. Wait, is this is this uh, what do you call this for sure? Like, or is still? That's the thing, though. It's inconclusive as well. It's still inconclusive. Okay. Yeah. So these supplements that you buy in stores, right? They they have these purported benefits, health benefits, right? Mm -hmm. Like the omega fatty acid in the fish, or fish oil. 
helps you with cardiovascular health and your memory, right? Right. People say ashwagandha will help you with your memory, your uh, cognitive abilities, make you think clearer, and make you more active, right? And the thing is, it's inconclusive as well. Most uh, most supplements are inconclusive. The only supplement, few supplements that I know are uh, are known that have benefits are usually the vitamins. Okay. Yeah, vitamin C, vitamin D, B12, all this stuff. They have uh, extensive research where you can have, you know for sure what it does in your body. I actually haven't heard of this plant before, but it kind of sounds like a plant that will grow to a place where uh, Black Panther lives. Oh my gosh, Wakanda? No, no. <laughs> so, you're very close though. It's usually grown in India, Nepal, China. Oh, in that okay. Region. All right. Okay. So the word is Sanskrit, so the ancient language in India, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Ashwa means uh, horse, and Ganda means uh, smell. So it has a strong oh. horse like odor to it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, they do sell this as a little pill, supplement pill, right? Supplement. Okay. Yeah. And it's granite leaves. And I was reading it. It says it helps you with your anxiety. It helps you study. And it helps your memory. Help your your brain. Like I said, yeah, take a little grain of salt with that. Some of these okay. benefits that these uh, company lists, not really uh, extensive research in it. I mean, as long as it's not gonna hurt your body no, or no, make no. any any. I tried it. Body. I tried it. Didn't hurt me at all. Okay, it's, there you go. Yeah. It's kind of like it's kind of like caffeine, really. Okay. Yeah. Well, too much caffeine is not good either. So. No, no, I know. Yeah. Moving on to our other day, we have persistence of memory. Okay, alright, now we Dali got the, uh... in 1931, right? So, Salvador Dali, he's a surrealist Spanish painter. And when you look at this picture, right? It looks like surrealism. the blocks are melted. Exactly. Surrealism is basically like drawing something you see in life, and adding a little more of a twist to it. Mm. So, like, instead of like clocks, when you only see a clock, right? You think it's rigid and what you call it? Solid. Solid, basically, yeah, because you have to hang it on the wall. Right. So when you look at the pictures, right, you see these clocks are more soft and melted. Mm -hmm. So this is during the time when uh, Albert Einstein came up with his theory of relativity, where time is basically how you perceive it. Time for me is much different for time for you. Oh. Right. So I thought time is supposed to be... Uh, it's relative. Well, it's relative to it's the movement rigid. of atomic uh, matter. Yes, and but the, but well, I don't want to go too deep into for, it. <laughs> for, for that, right? The time is rigid in terms of uh, the decay of the atom. Yeah. That's how uh -huh. they do it. But in terms of how you perceive time, how I perceive time, it's much different. It's, That's why it's, it's called relative. All right. It's like saying reality is relative too, because what is re real it's to real me to maybe might maybe. not be real to you. Exactly. Oh my gosh. The whole world is much different between our eyes. That's true. So, uh, remember, like anything that's happening, uh, you know, scientifically right. speaking, uh, goes in two channels, you know, so, like uh, whatever's being provided or what do you call this, projected, right. and the entity or the subject that is perceiving it. So, yeah. So, when I talk about relative, right, let's say this. Sometimes when you watch something that's exciting, a cool movie, right? You're like, where did time go? Oh, you're so engrossed oh, in yeah, that movie, yeah. right? But when you go study, right? It's like, it's only 10 minutes? <laughs> What's going on? If I exercise. So it's, it's different. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm all tired. Like, when it's only not, two minutes? Yeah. When something's not <laughs> enjoyable, right? You relate to it in a more negative way and you feel like the time is more longer. Right. When it's something you're enjoying, right? You feel like, where did time go? You're just so, what do you call it? In, uh, entrench and uh, what's the word for it? What's a good word for it? It, so, it has something um, to do with how focused you are exactly, on whatever is happening capture, in front right? of you. Yeah. So you're not really patient. So yeah, your, per your perception, right? Because you're, if you're really focused, then your perception uh, would be would be stuck to that until mm -hmm. let's say an activity, right? Until that activity is over, right? Uh, regardless of how long it takes. So when you look at the picture, right? The clock itself, right? When you think of a clock, it's rigid. It's one o'clock. It's always one o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, Salvador Dali tries to represent time as something that is more warping. Warping, exactly. Okay. So it's pretty cool when you look at these watches. They're I still just... don't understand what that orange thing is. It kind of looked like a. Oh, it, it looks so... like an orange with seeds. You know, the okay. seeds represents. It kind of. I was gonna like... say I thought it was like a like a, uh, a stopwatch. Stopwatch. Yeah. But are there any stopwatch back in the day? Pretty sure there is. Nineteen thirty-one. I think so, because I think the little dial on top is the one where you adjust the clock. That's what I was thinking, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I think it's just 
like a spin-off, like something like Time as Organic, you know, kind of like an orange. Wow, Time as Organic, huh? that's that's a good interpretation. The good thing that's about good these thing kinds about art, of art, right? you, you, you interpret it yourself, just like, uh, uh, what do you call this? It's like what we were talking about a while yeah. ago, it depends on your perception. It's like so. we call it, the, the phrase is like, uh, pictures worth a thousand words, right? Mm -hmm. It's really how you see the... Uh, that's why I prefer comics. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, comics do have words. <laughs> well, yeah, but I would say, like, the, if you're seeing the picture, you don't have to, like, read it in the novel. You know? True, 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 true. So, but this, it's just me, guys. this painting, right? This, I, when I thought, when I, I always picture this pain, uh, painting as really big, right? Like, mm -hmm. five feet. It's actually, like, about, like, a regular piece of paper. It's around, like, a, a foot. It's not that big. Okay. It's like, a regular piece of paper. You see, it's just a little, tiny little bit bigger. But it is held in like the, this uh, this kind of paper. Yeah, kind of a little bit, a little bit bigger than that. Okay. It's held in the MoMA Museum of Modern Arts in New York City. So you guys can see it when the museums are open. All right. Moving on to our science fact of the day, we have serotonin. Uh, let me guess. Some have something to do with memory. Of course. Good job. I memorized so, it. Serotonin is usually called the happy molecule. Oh, happy so molecule. It, Why? It helps help you with your mood. Your appetite, your uh, memory helps you, really helps you function every day, right? So when you look at the chemical, right, you see the C. When you look at the picture itself, right, you see the little black balls. So that's, that's carbon, uh, carbon, right? Okay. So there's 10 of them. You count them, there's 10 of them, right? The H is hydrogen. Would be the white one. That was the white one. Okay. Hydrogen, good job. And there's two nitrogen. The nitrogen is the blue one. Blue, there's two of them, right? And then there's only one oxygen. One oxygen, right. So good. So uh, usually this is. Uh, it's a silicon, so it's a circle. The carbon forms a circle. I got a question. A is is yes. that what it actually looks like if you look at the microscope? Like the attachment of, of these molecules? Well, the thing is, like when you see, when you look at a molecule, right? You see how the, the balls and the are attached, right? There's no line. Okay, so the only difference is there's no line. There's no line. And yeah. the only way for you to visibly uh, kind of uh, comprehend it is to kind of connect them through yeah. that. Through that. It, okay. It's just probably gonna look like a little ball it's just shaking like this. But aren't they moving though? They're moving. They're always constantly moving. They're com I mean, not, not moving around, but shaking. Like they're shaking. They're shaking. They're vibrating. But the thing is, like um, the bonds that you see that's connected to atoms, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't see it. It's, mm -hmm. it's like it's not invisible, but the bond is there. It's just shaking. It's like basically like constellation. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. Don't, you don't really co you don't see a physical or no, a no. visible line connecting the stars. It's but like an imaginary connection. Exactly. Right. Yeah. To give you to co to help you comprehend it more. So, so this is called a happy molecule, right? I'll tell you why. Because it helps. I guess I have your, that molecule. It helps with your mood. And some, when you when you have low amount, right, you become depressed. Oh. So there, there's antidepressants, right? Okay, I, I think I think I told you this before. Your body has a certain amount of serotonin, right? And your brain is floating that helps with your mood. Mm -hmm. You have a good amount of levels, right? You're, you're happier. Okay. There's a happy molecule. But during a certain time, right, the brain has to remove all that from your uh, blood. And when you move it, right, you feel not so happy. Okay. So oh, these, a little bit down, I guess, under the weather. Because your your level of serotonin is much lower now. So these drugs, right? They basically say, brain, let's leave the level a little bit high for a while, so mm -hmm. we can enjoy a little bit more. Because okay. some people, like for me and you, right, our production or how much how much serotonin we make is different between person to person. Oh. So let's say you have a low amount of serotonin, your body can only produce so much, right? These antidepressants, these drugs, right, will say. Just, just wait, wait, getting rid of all the Oh, serotonin. so they're not adding serotonin in your body. No, but they're, they're not adding. They're, they're stopping your body from flushing it rid, out. Yeah, yeah okay, so okay. It, it basically, like, it lets you stockpile when you have a good amount of level of so, serotonin. You oh. Become happier. So that's what these drugs do. And it's also an anti-emetic. So basically, uh, em emetic means emesis. It means vomiting. Vomiting, okay. So it stops people from vomiting. So usually when people do chemotherapy, right, they can't hold down food. That's true. Yeah, so they that's take true. Uh, they take oral like tablet serotonin, which helps them with the appetite, so they can hold down food. Because you need, once you, once you need to digest it, so you can stay healthy. No, you know? no, but if you throw yes, it up, yes, exactly. You need you need you need nutrients because after because chemotherapy is very hard on the body. Right, right, right. It's, so you need to unfortunately it targets pretty much anything, everything yes. in your body, not the good cells and the bad cells. So. Right, right. So the thing, like all good things, right? Too much of it is. Can be really bad for you. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you have too much serotonin in your body. We have this uh, syndrome called serotonin syndrome, where what does it do? You basically you have a uh, higher temperature in your body. You start shaking. You have tremors. I thought you turned into a joker. 
Oh, because you're super more happy? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's... Hey, bats! That's, that's psychotic. He's oh, okay. Psychotic. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, serotonin itself, right? It's mostly... Uh, 80, 90% of it is made in the GI tract. So your stomach will lose it. So I guess how uh, we eat food, right? You get more happier. So your serotonin is... True, yeah. You know what they say, like, if you're hungry, you're grumpy. Right. And so, it might have something to do with that. So how about this? When you, on Thanksgiving, right? You know, when people say you eat tur- a lot of te- turkey, right? You get a lot of this tryptophan. Okay. The tryptophan makes you sleepy, right? So tryptophan is the bas- basically the, the first part, the, what we call it, the building block to make serotonin. Mm-hmm. So tryptophan becomes serotonin. Okay. So serotonin itself cannot go to your brain through your blood brain barrier. So your brain has a way to filter out stuff that doesn't enter your brain. Because mm-hmm. like your, your blood can have bacteria, right? And you don't have bacteria in your brain. Of course. So this blood brain barrier is a filter that keep, keep all the bad stuff from going to your brain. Okay, that, that sounds good. Yeah, so serotonin can't enter the brain. So tryptophan is a little, uh, the, the core ingredient can go in the brain and become serotonin in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. So serotonin is very important to keep your mood elevated yeah it's actually i mean you know it's, it's your memory right and i just want to add it out, uh, out there that it's actually good to that joe was able to explain it right and uh we will go more in depth with these guys well so yeah this um, is a little bit like a intro to it yeah but see the thing is you know so a, a lot of people will say oh antidepressants is going to be another drug and it's not going to be good for you but if you are able to understand it as how joe explained yes. it uh it, it, you know uh it actually does do something, you know, so, like it gives you an idea how it works. Right. So the thing is, like, when people think of medication, right, they're scared of taking because they don't know. Yeah, what because it like is. you know, when, a lot of people would think medication equals not good. Like you know? medication means something wrong with your body. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So no, but I, I'm saying that some people would also think that medication effects. is not good. Uh, you know, it's just kind of another what do you call this? Uh, excuse to give money to to the pharmaceutical companies and all, right? I mean, it could be true, but at some point the ones uh, it really depends. Yes, 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 but it's not entirely false. So I we, mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's not entirely false. We you know? will talk about in terms of like uh, medication and side effects and what it's used for, because you got to be educated in what you're putting in your body. Yeah, because I bet oh, uh, whatever you explained uh, wasn't explained by a doctor if, if he prescribed or if, no, no. if they prescribe you this. just give you this. Exactly. It's right. like, what does it do? <laughs> if you ask, what does it do? Well, it helps with your uh, depression. Right. But how does it work? Yeah. <laughs> you the, know? So, the mechanism, how it works. Exactly. So That's we, why we some will talk about will more. Doubts. We will talk more in, intensively, more extensively. And no, but it's actually lessons. good how you explain it. You right. know, like how I mean, this molecule is responsible for this, and yes. unfortunately, uh, you know, if some people don't make enough of it. That's why their mood is a little bit lower. There you go. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just how these molecules affect your brain and how your mood is elevated. And these medication, the way how it works, helps you. There you go. So it does help with your memory. So JR, what is our theme? Well. Our theme will be related to the word of the day, and it means, I don't know, memory probably. It has something to do with memory. Word of the day Memorize. is evocation. Oh, <laughs> E-V-O-C-A-T-I-O-N. So it's a noun, meaning the act of bringing or recalling a feeling of memory or image to the conscious mind. Isn't it like a, how so do you say? You're, you're recalling. It's a recall, yeah, 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 there you go. You're reminiscing something, you're remembering something, you're evocating it. I'm going to use that word. Evocation. You know what? I but will the, be evocating smell? something happy later. You know the thing is like, when people think of like memory, right? You know what triggers memory? Like, let's say the movie Ratatouille, right? Okay. Remember the chef? The critic, chef critic, right? Mm-hmm. He, he remembers his chocolate mm-hmm. the Ratatouille. Thing. Right, right, right. Uh-huh. So the food, right? Triggers in your stomach because the, the serotonin is made in your GI tract, your guts, right? And the serotonin brings back the memory. Wow. Back. I, I doubt that movie actually. No, uh, they, didn't, they didn't probably yeah. know that. They probably know that. <laughs> so. It's just more like, uh, uh, what do you call it? That um, old saying where your mom cooking will bring you back to your childhood. That's, well, yeah, I mean, like those cooking, I mean, those cooking, those sayings. <laughs> yeah, that's saying the phrase, uh, yeah. Should have come from an experience. And uh, even though they weren't able to explain it back in the day, right. it's still tied to that, you know? I think most of the good memories are tied to food. That's I'm pretty sure we can solve. It's not all. But we can solve world peace and we solve world hunger. Everyone's just. You know what? That's true. I That's so true. Too. Yeah. So, uh-huh. so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that triggers your memory, but smell, taste, food is basically smell and taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that is it for today's show. 
a pretty good episode. Yeah. Before we reach Easter on the it weekend, is. guys. Easter is this Sunday, yes. And I don't know. It's just so interesting when you think about these chemicals. Like people, we don't know too much about our brain or their, how our body works, right? Mm-hmm. And we're gonna explore that more later in our lessons that we. Will, yeah. But thank you guys for uh, watching, enjoying mm-hmm. the show, and have a good rest of your day. Have, have a, a good, good weekend. weekend. Have and a have a good Easter. Easter, and we'll see you on Monday. Have, have a good Monday Easter show. weekend. Right. Bye there. Thank you, guys. Bye.